Yeah, I think this is possible. Got some projects going on right now, quite a bit. I got a praying mantis, got a giant swim bait. Working on other stuff for other things that I can't talk about. But hey, sometimes you just gotta make a lobster. In this instance, I do not need to make a lobster, but for some reason I cannot help myself. Making an eight and a half inch lobster. Let's go. Fun facts. Did you know lobsters have five pairs of legs, including the front ones, but three of those five pairs of legs have pinchers on them? Maybe that's very well known, but I didn't know that. Like their little legs have pinchers. That's cool. The freshwater crawdads and crayfish, I think the more proper name is crayfish, are closely related to the lobsters. They're not the same family. There's like a reef lobster in between and then there's freshwater crayfish. They are an invertebrate with an exoskeleton. They molt in order to grow. They shed. And while they shed, they're vulnerable. They're just kind of vibing out and doing their thing and molting. And anything can come along and just snatch them up. Gotta hide your lobsters. Why does it say here that lobsters have 12 walking legs? That would mean six pairs of walking legs. And right up above, in the first part of the Wikipedia article, it said that they have five pairs of legs. Three of their five pairs of legs have claws. What the heck? Get it together, Wikipedia. Now I do not know whether there are five pairs of legs on a lobster or six. I'm borderline offended. So the front four pairs of these lobster legs have claws. Okay. I'm gonna go with that. Lobsters have blue blood due to this presence of a chemical that contains copper. They have blue blood. Animals that have red blood have, have iron in their blood instead of copper. So the way that lobsters differ from freshwater crayfish is like you can just spot a lobster. Like they're bigger and stuff, but um, anatomically they differ because they lack a joint between the last two segments of the thorax. And then they differ from that reef lobster middle ground between a crayfish and a lobster that reef lobster doesn't have the pinchers on the other smaller legs. Pretty specific stuff there. Very useless knowledge to any sort of like normal person. That's what you get here. So lobsters, they're dark colored, bluish, greenish, brownish, poopish, you know? And then they churn into that nice bright orange when you boil them. Typically alive. Typically people boil them alive to eat them. Millions are caught every year. There are some lobsters out there that have weird albino-ish, very rare coloring. And they're usually not eaten, they just they throw those back or donate them to aquariums. There's a, there's a thing around that. There's a small group of people in the world that collect rare colored lobsters and good for them. Lobsters can live from 45 to 50 years. There's about, I didn't know that, 50 year old invertebrate. That'd be weird to eat a 50 year old thing that's pushing it. Do people normally eat 50 year old stuff? Like a cow is just like two years. I don't think people normally eat 50 year old organisms. So lobsters, they don't slow down or weaken or grow frail or lose fertility even with age. The oldest of lobsters are more fertile than the younger ones. <laughs> so there's an enzyme in them they think that repairs uh, DNA sequences and stuff and helps them live longer and longer and longer. So why do they even die? I need to read on. I'm interested. Oh. So 10 to 15% of all lobsters die due to exhaustion. Exhaustion during molting. So as they get bigger and they have more to molt off of their exoskeleton, it becomes harder and harder and they just start dying because they're too big. So death from exhaustion is pretty typical for a lobster. So oceans and rocky, sandy, muddy bottoms, everything, all the all different kinds of terrains. One sec. There's a sneeze coming on. It went away. They they burrow and they make holes and they live under rocks and it's just, they're pretty, uh, they don't mind a little diversity in their terrain, I guess. Uh, they're omnivorous. They'll eat other fish and other crustaceans and worms and plant life and I, they just eat everything. I could have just said they're scavengers. And if you keep them captive and together, um, they'll eat each other. So lobsters are generally 10 to 20 inches long. This one I'm making apparently is going to be a juvenile lobster because it's eight and a half inches long. Good size though. Like who makes a eight inch crayfish? I'm sure there's people out there that have that bait, but this one's gonna be weedless on a 12 out beast hook and we're doing fun facts on lobsters, not what I'm making. So let's get back to it. So when lobsters swim or flee away from a predator they swim backwards like their big butt tail like curls in and they 
they swim away that way. I mean, if you've seen a crayfish try to swim away from you when you're grabbing it, like that's how lobsters swim too. That way if something's coming at it, their butt, they're going backwards and they're gonna, you know, I really don't know if that's the case, but I like to think that. You probably don't even know what I meant. I didn't even describe what I was thinking. I just said like, you know, and pointed and stuff and went like this, so. I've never had lobster before. There's a fun fact. I've seen the mukbang videos of these generally overweight people eating a lot of lobster very quickly and making a lot of noise. And it put me off. I don't think that I can enjoy lobster to the full extent that a lot of people recognize it as. I'm having a hard time staying on track with the, <laughs> the fun facts. Okay. So the way people catch lobster, a lot of the time are with bait traps, cages. You can catch a lobster in 900 meters of water deep between one and 500 fathoms. But lobsters have been recorded at living all the way down to 3,700 meters below the surface of the ocean, 2,000 fathoms. It's getting harder and harder and harder to actually catch lobster because they, they take forever to grow and they'll eat each other. Lobster fishing isn't easy. How's this Wikipedia page already over? Let's get one more fun fact in here. Let me find something I, I skipped over. Lobsters have gills. Fun facts are over. What's that called? Stippling? Stippling? I don't know what that's called, but it made it look amazing. Sorry about the, all the construction noises across the street once again. Apartments are going in across the street. Completely destroyed any resale value in my house. So, great news there. But who cares about that when you got a lobster, open pour, swim bait? Few things left to do. I need antennae on this, which I am not so certain about open pouring antenna, like skinny little, I might think of something else for that. I'm gonna keep working on this. Lobsters have eyeballs, really weird ones too. I just lost it. Good Lord, where did that go? That's not cool. I took the uh, handle off of a clamp that was broke. This clamp's broke, don't worry. There's a lot of scavengers on YouTube. Very hoardy, get mad if you waste like a speck of dust. Um, we're not here to talk about that. I need to find the other half of this thing. But the clamp handle is knobby like that on either end. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna drill a hole and stick these in and that's gonna be the eyeballs on this lobster. Found it. All right, I'm gonna clean these up. They have paint on them. I used that clamp for years and years and years. I think it was my dad's that I stole from his shop back when I was making baits at my parents' house. I'm pretty sure if I went for something realistic with these eyes, lobster eyes have really skinny connections to the big ball part at the end. Much skinnier than what this is. And then when I would try to demold that, the, the ball would just pop off. I'd be left with a skinny little stem. It's good to frequently look at pictures of what you're making because going back to the pictures of a lobster and looking at their eyes, they're kind of set in. They're kind of deep. Some of them aren't. Maybe that's when you cook them. They pop out. Or maybe they go in when you cook them. Here's an uncooked one. Come on, I just want that picture. Phone went black. That picture was too much for this phone. Come on, give me that picture. Not a lot of eyeball going on right there. Okay, glad we cleared that up. So I'm gonna drill a pretty deep hole and there's just gonna be balls on the face of this lobster. <laughs> They're very on the side too, like hair and hair. Where's my pokey thing? It is a good thing my finger was not right there. 
I'd have a hole in my finger. Just went all the way through with both. That way they just, they sit nicely. Okay, never mind. This one ran into the other one. I'm gonna grind off some of this. Get in there. Woo! Gorgeous. It has eyes, finally. Made a pretty critical decision and I'm going to put antennae made out of wood on this master before I mold it. Long skinny ones and I'm gonna use a little uh, quarter inch poplar dowel and just have a heyday on my belt sander here and get this thin and round it off and then grind a flat side on that too so it sits flat against the table and can be open poured as well. Not a ton of confidence in this, but it's, it'll probably work out. You gotta try, you know. That worked perfect. Look. I mean, that's gonna be, I think that's definitely gonna be pourable and it looks good. I'm gonna, like, you see that's where I intended to have the antennas coming off of. I'm gonna flatten that down so it comes flush, you know, and boom. I need to make another one of these. Wow, that worked good. Okay, before I attach these, one more thing to address the rigging of this bait needs to be done. I have to cut a slot back here all the way up to here. And it's not, it's gonna be a pretty thick slot. I built this or drew this out and made this based around a 12 aught beast hook, but I'm kind of realizing a 10 aught is gonna fit too, and it might be the better fit. It's, you know, the hook point's pretty much in the same spot. The hook point will come out there or there. 10 knot would be fine. And on the beast hooks, the 12 aught has a th uh, three quarter ounce lead, and then the 10 knots have a half ounce. So pretty much the same thing, just how much weight do you want? Maybe you're fishing in some current and you want it, I'll want it deeper. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm gonna cut a slot. Yeah, that way when you're rigging this thing, you'll kind of just pull this out of the way both sides of these, stick the twist lock in there and start twisting. And then your line tie is gonna be right here, which maybe these fins back here will kind of catch some water and get this whole bait to, or at least it'll put the butt down and get the claws up and get it moving like this, maybe. That's my hope. Cut that slot, and then I also decided to drill a quarter inch hole right there. So there's no like sharp edges to pull apart. It's just like a nice smooth thing to open up, stick your twist lock in and start twisting. I'm okay with like everything right now on this bait. All the carvings, how everything looks. Still need to glue the antenna on, but after that, I think I'm gonna start sealing this wood and get it ready for molding. I gotta do a bunch of sanding and get everything smooth, but almost done with the master. What a crazy open pour though. This is gonna be, this is just getting crazy guys. I'm putting Vaseline on a block of wood right now. There's a reason, one sec. Cause I just enjoy doing that. Just kidding. I'm going to use that kind of as a release so I don't glue this to that block of wood, but I'm just gonna put the antenna where it needs to be, drop some super glue on there and it's glued on. Here we go. Or not, you know, might need a couple attempts. Well, uh, maybe we need a thicker super glue. Let's do a thicker super glue. I put a dollop on there. Oh, I need that accelerator. I have accelerator. Hallelujah. Forgot I had accelerator. That's gonna be on there now. It is definitely on there. Wow. Would you look at that? It's gonna use some normal sanding sealer for this first coat. I'm not gonna be able to just dip this with those antenna like that. I have to brush it on. So I'm gonna watch this pretty close for the next half hour. Make sure these claws down here end up getting all of the uh, sanding sealer dripped off and removed. That way they're not touching. Probably three coats, then I'll be happy. Sanding between each of them. See you when it's ready to mold. So, yes, something different is about to happen. I've tried it in the past, breaking up videos. Part one, part two, part three, you know. Successfully did it with a fishing reel, but I just didn't want to in the past. Now I want to. I can work on multiple things at the same time, have different parts of stuff coming out. Like right now, 
I have a praying mantis lure coming out soon. Soon too, because I can just put the part one of that. I mean, I shouldn't explain. I shouldn't explain. It's just this is what's going to be for a while. Right up until I can get to one days again. I love one days. One day! It's best to do those when it's nice out. I just want to do those when it's nice out, so. I'm working on a lot right now. I think that's a 13 and a half inch swim bait over there. There's a praying mantis right there, and there's a lobster right there. And there's potentially other open pour stuff. So, this is nice. Working on baits in the bait shop. See you soon! On to the next bait!